What comes to your mind when you think of India? The land of myths, festivals, gods, yoga, snake charmers, or something unusual? Well, to understand India, let us travel back in time and see how India evolved. The first signs of humans in the Indian subcontinent dates back to a period between 7000 to 4000 BC, the Neolithic period. But substantial evidence of human life was gathered by the monumental excavations of the ancient cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. Well-planned cities, granaries, bricks, statues and vessels are some of the evidences left behind by what history calls the Indus Valley Civilization. It is one of the oldest civilization on earth dating between 2500 to 1600 BC. About 1500 BC, the pastoral tribes known to history as Indo-Aryans advanced further east across the Hindu Kush mountains into India. The Aryans are widely believed to be associated with the Hindu philosophy and ideology. They lived in a class-based society and wrote books of knowledge called Vedas. The two most famous Sanskrit epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata, were written during this time. By 1000 BC, the pastoral nomads transitioned into territorial kingdoms. These warring kingdoms were further unified in India's first imperial unification to fight a common enemy, the Greek Emperor Alexander. Between the periods of 326 BC to 1800, India was ruled in succession by three powerful dynasties, the Mauryans, the Guptas and the Mughals. The Mauryan Empire in the reign of Ashoka is regarded as the golden age in Indian classical history. The national emblem of India is an adaptation from the Sarnath line capital of Ashoka. Two new religions, Buddhism and Jainism, also flourished under the same reign. The great Mughals whose reign spanned the entire 17th century have become a symbol of power and affluence, of tenderness and cruelty, luxury loving, sentimental, brutal and poetic. Akbar, Jahangir, Sajagan and Aurangzeb added a blend of Indian, Persian and Central Asian influence to the subcontinent. The Portuguese set foot in India in 1498 and were actively involved in spice trade. The British, then called the East India Company, dropped anchors off Surat, a western port, in 1608. The French East India Company established its headquarters in Pondicherry. Western Europeans learned how best to exploit the communal conflicts and social divisions within India's fragmented, pluralistic society. The process of territorial unification so forcefully pursued by the Governor General James, Andrew, Brown, Ramsey, Marquess of Dalhousie was but the first step in the master plan for the development of an Indian Empire in emulation of modern Britain. The long fight to independence began in 1857, dubbed as India's first war of independence. Indian nationalism had always been a central theme in this fight which scored with religious, class, caste and regional variations. Then came along a young lawyer whom Winston Churchill addressed as a half-naked fakir. Turns out this little brown man led his country to freedom. The father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi could foresee the British walking out of India. You don't think we're just going to walk out of India? Yes. In the end, you will walk out. Because 100,000 Englishmen simply cannot control 350 million Indians if those Indians refuse to cooperate. And that is what we intend to achieve. Peaceful, non-violent, non-cooperation. Till you yourself see the wisdom of leaving your excellence. India finally achieved its independence on August 15, 1947. In the voice of the first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. 
Following independence, India was faced with many challenges, one of which was to feed its hungry millions. The Green Revolution was designed to focus on food self-sufficiency. This in turn yielded phenomenal results. In 30 years, India established itself as one of the world's biggest agricultural producers. The government of India also initiated major policy changes in the dairy sector to achieve self-sufficiency in milk production. The White Revolution as it was called gave a boost to the dairy development and initiated the process of establishing the much needed linkages between the rural producers and urban consumers. In 1998, India was the largest producer of milk in the world. Late President Kennedy once quoted, A young man who does not have what it takes to perform military service is not likely to have what it takes to make a living. The Indian Armed Forces consist of three services, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, making it the fourth largest military in the world. Indian soldiers fought in every major theatre of operations during the World War I and II. Post-independence, India had fought three wars with Pakistan over Kashmir in 1965, 1971 and 1999. The Chinese have two major claims on what India deems its own territory. In 1962, unable to reach any political conclusion, India and China indulged in an armed conflict. India has troops stationed in Siachen Glacier, which is the world's highest battleground at 16,200 feet. It is also worth mentioning that India has never invaded any country in its last 10,000 years of history. The earth is the cradle of humankind, but one cannot live in the cradle forever. India's venture into space. India is one of the nine countries in the world with satellite launching capability. India's space program dates back to 1975. Aryabhata, named after the Indian mathematician, was the first satellite to be designed in Perth. In four decades, the Indian Space Research Organization has built and launched over 50 satellites. The Indian National Satellite System and the Indian Remote Sensing Satellite Series was launched for communication and remote sensing purposes. India launched its first lunar mission in October 2008 with hopes of achieving high resolution images of the moon's topography. India graduates about 350,000 engineers a year. Over the years, India has established a reputation for delivering quality products and services with refined process methodology, stringent quality control and general adoption of global best practices. India's large pools of English-speaking engineers and post-graduates have a proven record of providing high-end solutions to problems and world-class research and development. The time zone is also an advantage which enables Indian companies to program software, staff call centers, produce documents and provide myriad other services while most of the consumer world sleeps. In the last 60 years, India has made tremendous progress in science and technology, power, infrastructure, banking, retail and manufacturing sectors. As of July 2008, India's foreign direct investment surpassed 91 million US dollars. It is also home to four of the richest men in the world. Goldman Sachs, the world's largest investment bank, is predicting India to be the second largest economy by 2050. This is indeed India, a passage from Mark Twain's travelogue following the equator 1897 reads, The land of dreams and romance, of fabulous wealth and fabulous poverty, splendor and rags, of palaces and hovels, of famine and pestilence, of genie and chains and aladine lamps, of tigers and elephants, the cobra and the jungle, the country of a hundred nations and a hundred tongues, of a thousand religions and two million gods, cradle of the human race, birthplace of human speech, mother of history, grandmother of legend, great-grandmother of tradition, the one sole country under the sun that is endowed with imperishable interest for alien prince and alien peasant, for lettered and ignorant, wise and fool, rich and poor, bond and free. The one land that all men desire to see, and having seen once by even a glimpse, would not give that glimpse for the show of all of the rest of the world 
combined.